Coloni have dropped their Subaru engine and are running with a Ford Cosworth power plant, which they say weighs a staggering 100 kilos less. McLaren may be under pressure, but Honda have promised them a more powerful version of their V10 engine for this race. As he revealed to us here on Eurosport at the French Grand Prix, Alain Prost has confirmed that he will be retiring from Formula One at the end of next season. This is the halfway stage in the season and the time when the pre-qualifying is reassessed. The lucky team are LaRousse who move forward to qualifying proper. The unlucky ones, Ligier. Let's have a look at how they fared in that very early morning session. Ligier were making their debut in this cutthroat forerunner to the competition proper. The French outfit showed little evidence of the blow to their morale, Philippe Alio qualifying fastest in 1 minute 45.513 and teammate Nicola Larini restored more Gallic pride when he posted the second fastest time of the early morning session. The third place in the official practice sessions went to Olivier Griard, who maintained his impressive record in the low nacella. Last to move up a grade, Yannick Belmas, who made up for teammate Gabriele Tarquini's failure to join the top flight. So, Philip Alio, quickest in the session, he's no stranger to pre-qualifying, he had to do it last year. I asked him how the car was handling early in the morning. Oh, the car was not too bad because I finished first, but uh, the problem is the pre-qualifying. Pre-qualifying is something, you know, very, very difficult, but also very exciting for the driver. Because uh, uh, if you miss this pre-qualifying, if you have to, just a small trouble, you are dead and the, the weekend is finished for you and that's why this pre qualifying are something very very exciting and all okay it was the first time for the team here to be in pre qualifying not the first time for me because i was in pre qualifying last year with uh, la route and uh, it everything was perfect today all the mechanical all the people was very good very good and uh, you know, it, it's not very easy to be to be quiet in, in this uh, house, and uh, also no problem for me because I was first in the beginning to the end, and uh, now it's finished and I'm I'm happy. What did it mean to the team having to pre-qualify? Uh, for the team, it's really big trouble. First, because you are completely at the back, like. Uh, the, if you are not in Formula One, you know, you are not considerate. And uh, for that, sometimes it's really difficult because all the first team have the nice box, everything, and you, you are with your truck completely at the exit and uh, with the other. That's the first difficult thing to support. The second is um, all the um, organization is different because you have one hour more and you need to change many, many things. And for example here, uh, we put uh, many bikes around the track because during this hour, if you have just a little trouble with the car and you are stopped completely at the exit, here is seven kilometers and it's impossible to come back. And it's uh, a different organization, you know, but uh, I'm happy and surprised because the team did very, very well for the first time in pre-qualifying today. I hope it will be like this till the end. Not such a happy session for Coloni with their new engine. It may be lighter and prove more reliable, but there's still that matter of fate to deal with, as driver Bertrand Gascher negotiated the first corner and got it all wrong. That put pay to their chances of getting through pre-qualifying. Another man with problems in pre-qualifying, Brazilian Roberto Moreno. His Eurobrun left the track at the same point. If anything, a more dramatic exit. It hasn't been the happiest of German Grand Prix for Moreno. He missed the first half hour of the session when his car was completely rewired. So quickest among the pre-qualifiers, Philippe Alio for Ligier. Second fastest, his teammate Nicola Larini. Third was Olivier Griard in the Ocella, and fourth, Yannick Dalmas for AGS. The unlucky ones this time round, Tarquini, Moreno, Gasho, Langes, and Giacomelli. <laughs>